way back in 1978, the band Devo asked the immortal question, are we not men? I was actually a fan of the band Devo, saw them in concert right before their first album was released, still listen to them occasionally. Years later, I found out that line, Are We Not Men, actually comes from the horror classic Island of Lost Souls, which was about a human and animal hybrid. And that brings us to today's episode. This is the Kazdoy Closet. I'm Kazdoy, that's my closet, full of all the stuff that I love. And today, two films about people who move from human to reptile. How did this happen? Why did they do this? Let's check it out. Today's first film is The Alligator People from 1959, a brisk 74 minutes long in beautiful black and white cinemascope. So you're gonna have uh, the picture cropped on the top and on the bottom. This is about a wife who's abandoned by her husband on their honeymoon and she tries to track down where he went. She finally gets to the uh, Bayou country in Louisiana and finds his terrible secret of why he abandoned her. The whole thing's told in her flashback. She's in a sanitarium at the beginning. She's blocked out the whole memory of this, but she's under hypnosis with a doctor and um, she's telling the story and there's a voiceover where she tells what happened to her. The cast uh, includes Beverly Garland as the main character. I'm familiar with her probably from TV. She had a hotel, she might still be there. Uh, uh, the Beverly Garland Hotel in the San Fernando Valley. Um, Richard Crane plays her husband. They're both very good. And then in a supporting role, Lon Chaney shows up. He's really great in this. He's crazy as usual. He uh, hates uh, alligators. He's always cursing them. He says, I hate gators. And he shoots at them. And he says, you know why? Look at my hand. And he's got a hook for a hand. This is what they did to my hand. He says this like three times through the film. He's totally crazed. He's drunk. His hair's crazy. His clothes are all rumpled. He kind of lives among the swamps and stuff. And uh, a really kind of surprising scene. This is a little bit of a spoiler. At, uh, he's got the eyes for Beverly Garland. And at one point, he attempts to rape her, basically. I was pretty surprised how far they were going to go in this 1959 film. Um, he's drunk. He's drinking all the time. And he, uh, and he grabs at her, she resists him, he punches her out in the face and it is gonna start to rape her. I, and he gets stopped, of course, but I was pretty surprised it went that far. So, you know, the opening credits, uh, it pans across a lagoon or a swamp at the beginning. And I, th I had low expectations for this film. I mean, come on, it's called The Alligator People. And look at that cover, right? And I thought, when they showed the lagoon, I thought, is, it, is that the Gilligan's Island Lagoon? Are you, they using the same set? But I was pleasantly surprised. This is a very underrated horror slash science fiction film. Horror film, basically. Um, why do I say it's underrated? This has a lot going for it. The music is spooky and moody. It's well photographed. Think of sort of like those films that Val Luton produced, like Cat People that kind of vibe, that kind of look and feeling to it. Um, it has a female lead who is smart. Both those things are a rarity for a 1950s horror film. And it has um, lots of dread building up through the film because the townspeople, they don't wanna say anything. They just say, you need to get out of here. This is a bad place. We don't know why. So it keeps you hooked. And like, what is going on in this town that everybody's so freaked out about? Um, another thing I really appreciate is they seem to use real alligators in this film, not fake ones. There might have been one scene where it looked a little bit fake, but they were real. Um, unlike, say, uh, Africa Screams, that Alvin Costello film, where it's obviously a fake alligator chasing after Lou. Uh, but I think alligators are just fascinating creatures. Not that I know anything about them, but they seem to be like the closest things to uh, monsters or dinosaurs that we still have in today's world the way they look, those jaws with the giant teeth sticking out, and they seem so slow, but they can move really fast. They're so powerful that um, I find them really interesting. And the makeup here is also done very well. And the characters are sympathetic. Basically, I'm talking about the 
to the, to the couple, the female lead and her husband, who uh, is, is uh, unfortunately going under some kind of transformation. And we find out what that is at about the one hour mark. We find out that there was an experiment. He was in a bad accident and there's some kind of serum that uh, alligators possess that, can, that cured him, but it had a side effect. He started looking sort of like an alligator with scales and everything. And uh, that's why he fled on the honeymoon. I can show you what that looks like on the inner sleeve of this. It has a picture of him in uh, scales. And there he is uh, holding his, his wife. This scene, of course, never shows up in the film. And so then later on, he is tired of looking like this. So he wants to be completely cured. And they say, well, we'll give you a super, super strong dose of radiation. There's your 1950s uh, Cold War atomic bomb radiation theme. And that turns him into something even worse, which is, if you can see right here, laying down there, he's got like an alligator head on a human body. Now that could be laughable, but I think they really earned that at this point because everything before it was credible and played seriously, wasn't played cheesy, wasn't cheap looking at all, I didn't think. So I was pleasantly surprised by this film. I, I'm going to give it a four and a half gators out of five. This is a Scream Factory disc. It, the picture quality is very good. I would say excellent. Audio is fine. Um, the extras include a uh, commentary, audio commentary, which I did not listen to, a trailer and some uh, still, still photos from the film. Now, where can you see the alligator people? You can see it on YouTube for free. I don't know how good the quality is, but it's on YouTube. Otherwise, I'm not sure where else you could see this one. The second film today is The Reptile from 1966. It's uh, 91 minutes long. This one's in color. This is about a man who inherits his brother's uh, cottage in this small English town. This is back in the day. There's horse and buggies and stuff like that. And, uh, but when he gets to this town, it turns out people are showing up dead uh, with fang marks in their neck and they're discolored and they're foaming at the mouth. And he's thinking maybe this is what happened to his brother. So he starts to investigate. Um, the cast and the credits, I'm not gonna get into. I was unfamiliar with all of them but I was familiar with the studio. This is a Hammer film, and because of that, it's what you would expect from a good Hammer film. Uh, those strong, bold colors, moody music and atmosphere, uh, kind of the gothic architecture, and it's just well-produced, good-looking film. Um, it's similar to the Alligator People because, again, you have uh, two outsiders, the man and his wife, coming to this town, and nobody wants to really talk to them, they're all freaked out about something, and eventually they learn that, just like the other film, a person has been turned into a reptile. You can see her there. Um, and that's at the, about the one hour mark. We finally see the reptile. Turns out it's a woman. There she is, right there. Good makeup job, really like the makeup. It's very good throughout, except for one scene. It looked like they kind of ran out of money or something, and the makeup looked pretty bad. But um, you see her briefly at the one hour mark. And uh, again, a little bit of a spoiler. Why is she a reptile? And, and she's good. She's got the weird eyes and she's got the fangs and she hisses and it looks very cool. Um, she's a reptile because her, her uh, father is a doctor. He's the doctor in the film. And when he went to Borneo, he found out about these snake people who live there. And it was a secret society and he was gonna come back to England and write about it. They didn't want him to write about it. So to punish him, so they turned his daughter into this reptile woman. She also sheds her skin in the film. You don't see it happening, but you see the shell of her skin sitting there. So this again is a good film. Uh, I kind of like the alligator people more, but I'm going to give this one a three and a half snakes out of five. This is also a Scream Factory disc. Picture quality, excellent. Audio is fine. This has got uh, several uh, features on it, a making of, an interview with the assistant director, and then an episode of World of Hammer about wicked women. All those are about 20 minutes long. I watched some of it. 
I didn't watch all of it, but they look fine. They look pretty good and interesting. Um, where can you see this? I have no idea. I, I can't, I don't see it on YouTube. You can maybe see if your library has it or if you're creative, find another, another uh, place to check this movie out. But both movies I liked a lot. Now I do have a few closing remarks. Let me get to those. First of all, I want to say we reached our goal of 375 subscribers. I want to thank you all for that. Our next goal is 400 subscribers. Please, if you like what's going on here, uh, feel free to subscribe. It's free. I'm not selling anything, as I always say. I don't have an eBay store. I'm not looking for people to pay money for to Patreon or wherever, they, wherever that is. Um, I do want to apologize for not posting more videos lately. I try to post at least one a week, but there's been a little bit of a problem here. The uh, Kazdoy water closet is being renovated. We have two. One's being renovated right now, and it's real noisy, and it's pretty annoying, as you can see. So as you can see, it's uh, pretty annoying, it's pretty noisy, it's impossible for me to record. Even outside, you can still hear the noise, so that's why there's been a little bit of a lag time between episodes, but we should be done soon, and we're not gonna start the second bathroom until hopefully after Christmas or uh, after the first of the year. So we will persevere. Um, thank you so much for subscribing, really appreciate it. Uh, please feel free to uh, uh, leave a comment down below here. Leave a thumbs up. Don't leave a thumbs down. Subscribe again. That would be great. Or share this with your friends and neighbors. Hope you like this one. And I will uh, thank you for watching. And I will see you next time.